yeah, I'm Katie Scott. Here's some of my work. I, my work's definitely very much inspired by nature. Um, I would maybe say not just nature, but also like the human uh, desire to understand nature and decode it and how that's developed over time. Um, even looking as far back as, say, the ancient Greeks and how they first started to understand human anatomy. Um, Hippocrates had this idea called the wandering womb, where uh, a woman's womb would like move about her body through all the other organs, depending on what smell it was attracted to or repelled from, which I just like instantly felt entirely uh, inspired by. And then, obviously, like that kind of that kind of thinking lasted for hundreds of years. So even in the Middle Ages, you have ideas where uh, vision works through the eye emitting light or like putting out admissions that then allows vision to take place. So I just love this idea of there being a time of really early science where uh, civilization's trying to understand the natural world, but kind of through their own imagination and using like some observation, but then mixed in with complete uh, fantasy and present, and it's that kind of weird discovery and understanding. And that's kind of what inspired this work. I, kind, I wanted to create almost like my own uh, visions of the natural world. And that wasn't uh, isolated just to human anatomy, but I also wanted to play around with botany and geology. And nowadays we think of nature as very, um, uh, we have everything divided up very neatly, but in reality, there still are these weird uh, organisms that kind of transcend different categories in nature. So you've got like slime molds that sometimes act as a single cell organism, but then will come together to form like one, one slug if they want to move around as one being. Um, so I just love that idea of this hybridization between different categories in nature. And this isn't something I only do in my personal work, but I also like to have it, um, you know, develop into commercial work as well. This project up here was for Pernod Ricard. Uh, they put out a book called Scalpel, which is kind of an internal trend forecasting book magazine. Um, I did nine chapter dividers that were based on a 15th century religious concept of nature called the great chain of being, which is a hierarchy uh, that tries to explain nature kind of from the bottom up. So starting with minute particles, then going up um, through minerals and plants and uh, animals, humanity, divine beings, and then God. So, and then even within, uh, within those categories there are subcategories. So the animals are divided up to, in the way that we know them now. So there's um, fish and birds and mammals, but not just that, but then mammals will then be divided up uh, in terms of how useful they are. So at the lower end, you have tame animals like the, a house cat. And then above that, you'll have a, a useful animal like a cow. And then above that, you'll have uh, wild, majestic animals like a lion. And I just love that idea that um, they're getting closer to understanding nature and uh, it's divided up in this kind of logical sense, but then it's completely distorted through, again, this like imagination and this these kind of religious concepts. Um, and yeah, so that was kind of the inspiration for this project. And in a way, it kind of relates back to the, you know, the ancient Greeks. They're, under they're starting to understand nature, but through this like human self-important way, like we're at the center and it's actually completely fantasized and kind of could like rival any science fiction writers now, the way they, the way they like fantasize it and distort it. Um, here are some close-ups from that project. And I don't only uh, work in that kind of fantastical way, I think that will also um, think about nature in a kind of a more direct way. I've got a 
book called Animalium that came out last year, and it's a kind of kids' encyclopedia. And I remember the, uh, when I was first commissioned it, I kind of thought it might be similar to Scalp, and I was like, oh, great, we can kind of chop up all the animals and have it in this really fantastical way. And then they made me realize, like, no, we can't have people complaining about <laughs> me teaching the kids all this kind of wrong, wrong science. Uh, so that was a very different project for me to kind of have to like rein in that fantastical side. Um, and it was really interesting. I learned loads about animals along the way. Um, but at the same time, I still wanted it to be different. Like it, it's an animal encyclopedia, but it has to be different from, you know, like why, why not use photography if you want it to be entirely accurate? I think there's something that illustrations can bring to a project like this that photography couldn't, so it had to have a kind of curiosity to it. And for me, I definitely wanted to have a kind of a nod to um, like, uh, like pre-Victorian uh, natural history paintings. I was really lucky with this project that I got to go to use the Natural History Museum's library and look at their big archive of, uh, of paintings and books. And there was one, there's one collection that I really love. I think it's the John Reeves voyage. And he went out to China, but they weren't allowed to uh, like properly enter China. They had to just stay in the port. So a lot of the animals uh, that they collected, which were new to kind of Western biologists, were just were corpses. They were like dead animals that were being brought to port. So many of the, the paintings were done from these dead animals, but I guess they wanted them to look real, so they're kind of like propped up really weirdly, <laughs> as if they're like climbing a tree. And I knew it, like, when you look at the paintings, you do notice that something's really weird about them, but it was only when you read that, you're like, oh yeah, I understand why they have this kind of slightly uncanny, like a crane will have its neck bent back like way further than it should do. Um, <laughs> Or, the, or even just subtle things like the weight, you know, like a, within the painting, you can see that the weight of the animal isn't standing up. And I really love them, and they're like some of my uh, favorite animal drawings, so I really wanted to kind of capture that in a way in mine, or, you know, even if it's kind of an unnatural bend in the spine. And it was funny when it came around to amendments, because I'd kind of done this and like decided that that's what the book was gonna be like without really consulting anyone at the publishers. And uh, yeah, when I started to get the amendments back, they would be really like picky, like, oh, the one animal didn't have the right number of toes or the feathers weren't quite the right color. And I was like, yeah, and anything else? And like nothing was ever said about like uh, the angle of <laughs> the bird's heads or <laughs> the kind of double length possum tail. So that was quite nice. Either they kind of got my vision or they just, thought, we can't change these things, so we'll just <laughs> leave it. Um, but the other thing of drawing in that way is that it gives you um, a chance to really like play with space, I guess. Um, and yeah, think about how the composition works. And if you're kind of bending the animals around, you can make a much nicer composition. Um, yeah, and so now I'm working on uh, the, the sequel to Animalium, which is uh, on plants. And for me, I think plants have, um, in that way that I was talking about nature and how I'm inspired by nature through this kind of fantastical sense of it, I think with plants, they are, they've like, they're already <laughs> completely fantastical. And if I am ever doing something botanical, I'm just so fascinated by them in themselves, and uh, they, I, I, it's not, I don't necessarily think of them as something that I need to elaborate on, because they are just so weird and beautiful and fascinating. Um, and yeah, so I'm at the moment at that like perfect stage in a project where my job is just to like write down all my favorite plants that I want to include <laughs> in the book, and like go to Kew Gardens and walk around like it's my job to look at things and write things down. So that, that's very exciting. Um, I think I've gone too quickly, because <laughs> I've kind of run out of slides. Um, 
yeah, I mean, to talk a little bit about my uh, practice, I draw everything out by hand and then color it in on the computer. Um, and I think that that kind of separates my work from, if you're inspired by something, um, I think it's important not to make it look exactly the same. So I like that my work is quite clearly inspired by these kind of old, old botanical or anatomical works, but because it's digital, it has a, a different feel to it. Um, yeah, I've kind of, I don't know, <laughs> I think I've gotten, uh, I think I've left too much time at the end. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs>